Greetings, people. <laughs> Hope you're all well. Uh, had a, a long, lovely, well-rested weekend. Um, so, it's a Monday again. And, well, it's the beginning of a, of a new week and a new, and a new uh, My Artsy Lockdown session. <laughs> um, and a new artwork, of course. Hence the blank sheet of paper. Right, so this week we're back to the coast again and we are we have headed down the, the south coast to uh, a place called Marina Beach. Uh, one of the many little uh, uh, seaside resorts scattered scattered along the Kwazulu Natal co coastline. Um, um yeah so let's hit it and then i can and then i can describe as i go so we have a semblance of a horizon line so i need to just depict that with a with a t-square and then um and then i'm free to rumble uh let me just select a something to do it with that will do uh let's see Let's see, where should we put? Let's mark it off over. How about there? Let's see. Right. Good old T square. This, I think, belonged to my dad, if I'm not mistaken. So it's quite substantially older than me. Doesn't need to go all the way across. Let's see that over there something now. Right. So that's that established. Now, actually, you know what? I'm also going to use my, oh, I haven't got here, so I'll just have to use my steel ruler. Uh, to just put these two lines in. So this is a tidal pool that I'm, that I'm depicting, or rather uh, the uh, seaside edge of the tidal pool, as you'll notice what, what I'm kind of planning here. Um, that's to there. Just to pick that. One or another. That's going to have to go. Kind of like so. Doesn't have to be deadly accurate. Silence is, is important for me right now because I'm really trying to focus on this perspective.
Let's do this one stuff here. Why does this have to Right, an approximation, that's fine. That's all I need the, all I need the ruler for. Let's point. Right. Is that what I do? T. Yes, and as I explained in the little... Uh, description down below the video um, uh, the entire coastline in fact all around South Africa's coastline um, there are innumerable tidal pools and and they're all different. They're all unique in their own in their own special way, the way they've been constructed, etc. Because they've they've been I, I, these are not. I don't think have any architectural plans or anything like that. Uh, they are solidly built, however, and and they. Uh, but they are they are built in accordance with the surrounding rocks and the particular shape of the of 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 where they fit into the coastline etc um, so each and every one as i said is unique wherever they are um, the one i the, the one i have depicted so far was up up the north coast to dolphin coast at uh, belito and that one's uh, very different from this one, other than the fact that it's also a tidal pool. Um, and it's basically just to afford some protection from uh, to a body of water from the waves and tidal in that it's it rises and falls with the tide with the, with the incoming tide um, so it obviously has flow into it and whatever it's not completely dependent on waves crashing over the wall to fill it it's just it, it fills up and but it just it just offers that that sort of semblance of calmness where where children can swim and you know without being bashed around by the waves crushed on the rocks etc <laughs> yeah so that's that's what tidal pools are all about really quite it's quite straightforward so I'm looking to depict this tidal pool and kind of might spark off some nostalgia, I hope. So there are many rocky stretches with pools and gullies and whatever you I guess they just enclose off one of the gullies or so, you know something like that um, in, in, in many instances it's just easier so that I don't have to 
they don't have it, you know they didn't have to build an entire enclosure some of them did of course um, but for the most part they used the, the surrounding rocky rock rocky uh, areas to 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 kind of war in of it And even within the pool itself, there are a little rocky, part of this rocky outcrop. So once again, the base of the, the, the bottom of the pool is not necessarily completely smooth. It's partially filled in and they quite sort of quite uh, randomly built I suppose they're uh, all they meant were all they were that they were meant for was was to offer some some protection calm waters to swim in and, and what have you so not a great deal of consideration was given to their uh, architectural aesthetics and all that kind of thing um, However, they kind of present a, an interesting um, architectural presence, nevertheless. And they certainly have lasted very, very well. If they built houses today, like they built tidal pools 50, 80, 100 years ago, some of these are that old. We would have Um, a different, a different uh, quality of of building. <laughs> That's for sure. These things have taken a serious battering. Um, if, you, if you consider the, I mean, we we in on the uh, KwaZulu Natal coastline, um, <clears throat> and and pretty much the whole the entire eastern eastern coastline of uh, so in other words the the, the, the the southern african eastern coastline um it, t it takes a huge battering everything takes a battering because the, the we, we get heavy surf heavy seas um and so if you can imagine these things over 80 years or so constant constant battering so that they they're pretty much constructed out of uh, out of concrete and and uh, yeah so they have stood the test of time that's for sure.
So today is just about establishing our composition. Areas of contrast, light and shade, etc. So we've got a nice, uh, we've got a nice corner wedge to, to corner edge to this uh, to this tunnel pool, and in the distance over there is the the next sort of bluff with the coastline. Ah, oh, the coastline meanders in and out and in and out all the way down. So over there we've just got the next, the next little uh, resort, I guess, further down the coast. We're not far up from Port Edward here, which, which, um, as many of you know. Those of you who have, who live or, or who have, who have lived in South Africa was just on the northern side of the, the border uh, to the old uh, Transkei Republic. Back in the, the bad old days of apartheid, was the uh, was a, was a Bantu state, which was essentially independent and yet beholden to South Africa for for, for its for its support in terms of its economy and what have you but uh, anyway uh, that's that's another story we, um, so that's some um, maybe 20 or 30 k's kilometers down the coast further on. Most of this, as I said, most of these seaside villages, resorts, were, uh, as I said, holiday resorts. Um, many people would come down in, in, in season, holiday season for, uh, from, from the Transvaal back in those days, up in... Uh, Gauteng, Johannesburg, those kind of areas to the coast to get their uh, to get their fix of sea and sand and surf and umbrellas and speedos and bikinis, etc. Um, yes, many people did also reside here permanently. So it's always been uh, this particular. I, I really enjoy the South Coast. It's 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 much uh, it's much unchanged. It hasn't seen much change over the years. Whereas the North Coast has seen prolific development, and and to my mind, not great. <laughs> it's it's been more. And there's been a, a great, as I said, a proliferation of residential estates and it's just becoming far too uh, um, yeah, far too built up. The south coast is still pretty much the same as it always has been. Kind of this sort of lazy little seaside resorts. Wonderful. Um, uh, yeah, but as with the rest of the country, that it 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 does succumb somewhat to crime.
And that's really unfortunate. But anyway, what, what can one do? Crime is everywhere. Well, in South Africa it is. That's for certain. What can you do, as I say? Anyway, so it's about enjoying what we have, the splendor of the, the world around us. I know what's in it. South Africa has just gone into, or is going into a more serious level four lockdown once more, so that I guess it, it's a little, trying not to impede business too much and that was the that was the big the big factor when we started with lockdown we, we started at level five where uh, everything was basically shut down to prevent any movement and that was it was just it was just crippling to an already an already very poor economy in South Africa um, Powers that be did what they thought that they had to do. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't get into that. I don't get into that. It's just so. Anyway, we 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 excuse me. Back to a back to a slightly harder lockdown. But uh, ah, really, it's just to prevent people from these large gatherings, which they just weren't, people just weren't getting. Um, these large events, um, and especially the funerals, um, funerals, especially within the, uh, within, our, within our black culture, are large events, they really are. Huge gatherings, people. Anyway, so those, those, and the, the big, the party scenes and all of that, um, irrespective of culture and what have you, but uh, um, the, uh, people arrive there with their masks on. Some do, some don't, um, and then and then take them off, and then and then milling around with <clears throat> hundreds of other people. Um, when it's done, masks go back on and off they go again. And, and thinking that that makes a difference, it's, it's, yeah, so I guess people have to learn. And that's why there, there's this virulent spread of the, a spread of this virus that just people can't, it can't be contained really. When people have such a lax attitude towards it, it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, we, uh, we stand uh, regulated two meters apart in, 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 in the queue outside the shopping center, uh, shopping, uh, at least a uh, supermarket in a shopping mall. And um, we go inside and we, you know, Exchanging, you know, <laughs> the difference. Oh, it's crazy. <coughs> People pull their masks down to check to one another, and you know, it's it's, it's, it's crazy for the both people. People don't apply logic. They don't apply logic. Um, we have. People uh, climbing into taxis and buses, half you know, sandwiched together. You know, um, yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, I don't want to make this whole it, it 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 all about this. I was just kind of making mention of the fact that we're back to a more stringent lockdown once more. So I think it's a good thing in a way. I really do. At least, if, as they say, we, 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 we're not trying to impede the, the movement of people, uh, especially when it comes to business and, and what have you. Um, leisure is a different story. So people can't really travel to our tidal pools <laughs> for leisure purposes. 
from other parts of the country. I have a friend's wedding in on the 24th of July, which I, I hope will still be able to, to happen soon. They've been, they had to put it off once before. I think it was originally supposed to be in May. Oh well. Shame, shame. All right, let's use some. Uh, let's use some Conte. Yeah, okay, you can do that. So, as you all know by now, <laughs> um, the, uh, I, I like to work on the entire piece as a whole, not, not little by little, um, depicting the, 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 in detail, um, rendering it, rather, um, is the correct term, um, in rendering it completely, but one little part at a time. I can't do that. Um, I can't do that. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, for me, I, I enjoy, I prefer to energize the entire piece all at once um, with a, with an ensemble, an orchestra. Um, they don't, you don't play, you don't, you don't uh, play the, uh, the wind instruments first and the entire composition and then you stop and then you move on to the, into the, uh, to the brass section and then on to the percussion. You, 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 they all together, they all work together one whole forms the forms the composition. That's why they call it a composition. Um, it's 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 there for all of the instruments to get working together to complement one another. Um, that's why it's a musical composition. That's why it requires a a conductor, a maestro, to 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 bring them all together creatively. 
expressively. Um, that's why they dance up and down and contort their faces and 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 act the mood of the of the of the of the piece that they are busy rendering. <laughs> um, kind of I do that, but but <laughs> it's it's spread out over over the four or five sessions that I take to yeah so this is the same thing this is this is I'm the comp I'm the I'm, I'm the no I'm not even the composer I'm the uh, I am the uh, conductor just the conductor because every as with an orchestra this is a contributor all of the all of the in this little tray beneath you know beneath the the, the the on my easel here the all of this stuff all of my little you know sewings and uh, they're all contribute contributors to the end result and therefore i need to work on all aspects almost simultaneously bring it together little by little layer by layer because they all work together. I hope that makes sense. I can hear that Mr. Kit Kat has just arrived from wherever he had been. He wasn't, he wasn't, he was, uh, wasn't present at roll call this morning. And I know that because there's only one on the list, and that's Mr. Kit Kat. Maybe he was gallivanting, I don't know. This is going to be quite an interesting depiction because we have this uh, and, and the reason why I've chosen this kind of perspective etc is to show the calm waters within and the the, the, the surging surf without. I'm going to have a little bit of a, a pizzazz over here, a bit of a spray and what have you. So. Excuse me, um, as the water rushes up onto the wall. And that's just, as I said, over and over and over again. For the most part, I guess the, the people who constructed these structures um, took into consideration when they were building them, the, the rocks because the rocks are, I said, I, I would imagine granite. So very, very hard, they're, they're dark rocks. Um, and that, that are all the way up and down the coastline. Um, 
together with sandstone. Of course, they're not going to use sandstone. Sandstone gets worn away very, very quickly, very easily. Well, quicker, easier. Granite is another story. So they use the granite as part of the structure, the base structure that take the brunt of the surf. Uh, I imagine, I'm no, I'm no architect, but I would imagine that that makes sense anyway to me. That's how they would construct these things. And then they build on top of them so that it only has the, so that the concrete sections only have to take the, uh, the tail end of the, of the surf and not the crashing of the waves themselves. Yes, maybe in, a, a little bit more in, in, at the very zenith of high tide or even spring tides and, and so on. But by and large, the brunt of the force of the, of the, of the ocean is taken up by the, by the rocks themselves upon which they're built. So, very interesting structures, like I said. A very simple purpose. But yet there are kind of relics of, a, of, of days gone by. I, I don't see, you don't see tidal pools being built anymore. Uh, I don't know, things have changed. <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> You don't see them being built. Yeah, perhaps they've been added onto and so on over the years, and perhaps they didn't need to rebuild them because they're already there and they're quite strong, and they just have to add on and patch up and what have you every now and again. The, the ones that I've done, the tidal pool that I had done of Polito, uh, fairly recently I did a, I did a few, a couple um, of pieces. And there's this, uh, one of them has this, uh, this stainless steel kind of balustrade that, that leads into the water. You have to hold the old grannies to hold on to, etc. Um, and yeah, so that's a much more modern, well, you could call it within the last 30 years, <laughs> modern addition. And, and so on, and so on. Many of them are, of course, nowadays in a pitiful state of disrepair, crumbling walls and so on. And, uh, but anyway, by and large, they still do their job. And some of them have much more interesting um, um, aspects to them as well. There's the, the one that I've done some time back now. Uh, two pieces I have done of, of the tidal pool at the bluff, which has got these wonderful um, bollards all around the main pool area, uh, linked with chains and um, yeah, quite sturdy, quite sturdy beasts. Little walkways, some of them have got, um, yeah, others are just a kind of walled off area and that's it. But to me, what, fa what is fascinating to me is, what they, is not so much what they are, what they're meant for, but what they represent. And that's, and that's why I, I don't try and show the whole pool. I don't sh try and show the whole, you know, the surrounding landscape. It, it, it's not about that. Um, for me, what I try and depict in my artworks is is something is a, is a is a is a a micro aspect of a, a representing everything that it stands for so in other words this piece is about a perhaps stirring up some nostalgia of of what it meant to you as a child playing in the in the waters of the uh, 
of these rock pools, uh, of these, uh, <coughs> excuse me, tidal pools, and, and maybe the surrounding rock pools, or, or in the surf, you know, it's just, it's just about encapsulating that, that mood. In as much as the, my previous piece last last week was the how it falls, and I only it's ninety five meters, but I only depicted the top, kind of the top s s fifteen meters of it, because it's not about it's not about creating an artwork of the entire falls. Um, it was about that feeling one gets when looking up to these dizzying heights. Um, the so uh, and, and imagining the sounds, everything that goes on without the, the image area. So if you can, if you can start to imagine your mind taking you beyond the, 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 the parameters of the page of my work area, that's what it's about. The feeling. So as I move more and more towards abstract, and I think I will be getting there, um, towards just depicting mood. Um, that's what this piece is about. It might be unusual because, hey, I'm just, this is a wall, just a arbitrary wall. Um, it's not about that. And I think as I go along, I'll, I'll try to find the words to, to, to describe the meaning behind why I do what I do in that respect. But it's not about creating a pleasant picture, a pretty, pretty picture. Not about, that's not, that's not why I do what I do. Maybe there are others that do that, who like to depict these lovely, I do occasionally, I'll do these sort of landscapes and things like that, which are much more expensive, depicting the surrounding landscape, etc., for what it is. But uh, I, I do always prefer the, a, a, a kind of image that makes you think beyond what's obvious. I hope I'm talking sense. Well, I hope I'm making sense, not talking sense. I'm talking sense to myself, but I hope I'm making sense to you. <laughs> um, as I've been claiming all along, the... Uh, <coughs> The, you can only, even, even when you are capturing a landscape, you can only pick up a, you can only capture a certain, a certain perspective, a certain angle. Um, you can't hope to capture the entirety of the environment. And that's, I think for me, by capturing something more close in, more intimate, because this nevertheless captures the essence of where we are at. It might, it might, for somebody, for 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 somebody who knows this particular beach, this marina beach, will know exactly the spot, um, and it will conjure up a number of. Emotional responses, etc., memories, nostalgia, what da 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 da. Um, at the same time, somebody who doesn't know this place, somebody who's perhaps elsewhere in the world, um, understands the essence of it, or, or, or perhaps feels the, the the emotiveness of it in terms of the heavy surf on this side the calm waters, water on this side um, and what that represents because my point is is that is that the the mind we are highly highly creative 
in that our mind creates what isn't. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like that. I'll go back to that. The use of uh, in, 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 a, in an abstract in an abstract painting where there's simply a dot on a on a on a background on a on a, on a single color background and there's a there's a there's a dot and it's not about it's not even about the painting it's about it's about what what does the mind create from that singular dot. It's about emotional response. It's not about, ah, oh, that's nice. Ah, oh, that's nice. It, it's not about that. And that's, that's kind of where I'm, where I'm heading towards, I believe, um, in, my, in my own development as an artist. I never ever considered when I was younger, I never used to enjoy um, abstract art, but I guess I'm starting to understand a little bit more about why abstract art is. How did it come about? How did it come about? You know, it's... I still want to be able to capture the essence of um, of these places and but yet perhaps more of a get become more and more suggestive rather than rather than literal And that's, to me, a real challenge. Uh -huh. that, that really is. If, uh, you know, that, that's my kind of mission is to get that right. Imagine like a, 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 a really close-up image of a, even a photograph, let's say, for argument's sake, of a, of a ladybird, ladybug, on a flower. Um, and that's all. That's all. So this is, you know. Um, the mind creates the surroundings. Ah, this, and and that that that, that can be a uh, whatever the surroundings is 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 the reality of the viewer, of the observer. So the observer might make up this for me as an observer. I might create this 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 surroundings of this wonderful field of of. Uh, zinnias or you know whatever they might be cosmos um rolling like namaquiland or you know um rolling fields of flowers uh just from that one little hardly you know virtually insignificant little image of one little ladybird on a flower now I've created the entire landscape, the entire world that surrounds that from a feeling. That, folks, is what I'm about. That's why I do what I do. Well, at least that's where I'm heading. If you will indulge me, <laughs> please. That's what music, musical expression is all about, isn't it? <clears throat> How did jazz come about? How did these different, different genres of music come about? It's all about expression.
How are musical instruments developed to, to, to depict something else, something new, something fresh? This piece, I don't think it's. Uh, I, I'm going to be depicting that 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 a vibrant blue African African blue sky, African sky blue. Um, I, I wanted to go for a slightly more hazy approach here. Um, yes, clouds in the in, in the distance, etc. Um, but more lilac as opposed to that that. Uh, um, Vivid blue, um, and then blending, almost blending with the with a with a with a light aqua sea, verging on jade. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> that's where we're gonna go. Subtly sandy yellows and and, and tones over here. This. Well, the sand over here in the pool is, is it's all that and then it's dark rocks over here and then going into the the white surf coming in with the eh, da, 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 da. <laughs> you got it already haven't you get it got it good So I'm quite happy with today's progress. So we <coughs> we pretty much have our composition in hand. So, uh, I mean, as you can see with with the the title of this in the in the in the in the title of the uh, of the YouTube video, um, it's I forget what what day we're on in terms of lockdown. Literally, we are still, you know, we we, we South Africa hasn't been at any point free of lockdown. Um, since the 27th of March last year. So that's why I put that number in there because we're still counting. And for reasons given, I believe that we will be in lockdown of some sort at some level for a long, long while to come. <coughs> is what it is.
fortunately or unfortunately, depending on the way, depending on how you experience it. <coughs> What I have to be grateful to lockdown for is, is getting these sessions going. If it wasn't for lockdown, I would never have started. Never have progressed the way I've, I have. And, and it's very much a personal thing. Uh, very much a personal reason in this respect. Um, so that in, in a way, I'm, I have a great deal to be grateful for towards lockdown. So, there's many different ways of looking at it, as I said. Many different perspectives, many different reasons. Reasons to be cheerful. And yet, we can only really survive by being cheerful. Always look on the bright side of life, right? Anyway, I think we're done for today. And uh, so thank you for joining me. <laughs> yes, good start to the to the to this week's to this to this series. Um quite happy with the composition. Yeah, should be a goodie. Should be fun. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining, thank you for listening, thank you for enduring, uh, thank you for sharing. And, and thank you for your comments, as always. Um, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy them and, and, and appreciate them. So have a wonderful day further, wherever you are and whatever time of day you might be at. Uh, and catch you again on the morrow uh, for six, session two um, of this piece. So yes, have a good one, folks oodles and oodles of toodles and <laughs> catch you again soon be good be safe bye oh yes doodle doodle doodle